Hey everyone, Angelo here, Hollywood filmmaker. It's late here in LA. I'm usually not up this time. It's a little past 10 o'clock. I'm exhausted, but my body is racked with grief. I've been just overwhelmed with stress and it's just wrecked me in so many ways. Uh, this isn't directly related to the title of the video yet, the pastor who uh, was a real creep with me because that happened um, nine years ago. Uh, not that the length of time necessarily matters, it's just that I was w around him for a relatively short length of time and I got the hell out of his house. I lived with that creep. But I was thinking about uh, my experiences with him because I've dealt with another guy like him lately. Um, somebody sexually harassed me for six months. Uh, this was last year. It was a living hell. It, it was so shocking and disturbing and so violating. And um, it, it really, really damaged me. Like, it, I, I couldn't look at myself the same way. It was horrifying. This creep was totally objectifying me. It was, I realized, like, I, I was in such denial about what was going on. And I won't get into the specifics much. For one thing, it's just not not even interesting to me, like, the specifics. For one thing, I'm so tired of recounting it. I've had to recount it so many times to people. And it's just not worth it, um, at least right now. But the way he was doing it, it was so... Like, I was like, what's so troubling about this? I know it's so disturbing. It's obviously wrong. Um, even I, I couldn't quite say the word sexual harassment to anyone, but that's exactly what he was doing. And I realized, like... Oh, for one thing, a big part of it was, even if I was interested in this guy, he never gave me the chance to consent. Had I wanted to, he wouldn't. He wasn't letting me because it wasn't about him just being interested in me and uh, wanting my attention. It was about power. It was purely about you're not going to consent, Angela. You're not going to get a chance to because then I'll lose the thrill of my grip over you. It was so creepy and demeaning and just ugly and oh, viscerally like I felt like I was poisoned down to my skeleton, down to my bone marrow from that pig. But anyways, I've been going to therapy. Finally, I got into therapy for that. It took months to be connected to a therapist with a free like nonprofit that helps with this stuff um, with uh, people who've been um, sexually abused. I I can't believe, like, I'm, I, like, is this my life? Is this really what's happening? Like, I didn't think this would happen, you know? Um, but and it's made me come to terms with other things. Like, I was aware in my head. So this pastor, um, Baptist pastor in Virginia, I lived with him for a month. The circumstances, the story, it's all long. Basically, I needed a place to stay quick. I didn't have a place to stay, really. I was staying on a friend's parents' couch. Because uh, my friend lived with his parents, too. And um, after my brother attacked me, I pressed charges, couldn't stay at my home. I'd been sick for a long time. Uh, before that, I didn't have much money, hadn't worked much in a while. Basic short of it is, I found a listing on Craigslist for a home after I got a second job. I was a bouncer at two different bars and doing videography. It was brutally exhausting my schedule and I couldn't sleep anyways even if I had the time to because I was still recovering from my uh, dissociative disorder the place was $450 a month it was in Falls Church Virginia it's so disturbing like I used to joke about this story like oh that bast pastor was a creep yeah <laughs> yeah but like in reality it was traumatizing um, and I realized so many similarities between him and the recent guy who sexually harassed me. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize it's not even important who these guys' identities are. They're so pathetic. Uh, I don't need any power over them. And this, the pastor's gone. He kicked the bucket. So, uh, but he was, he, he offered a place for $450 a month, which is dirt cheap. Uh, it was dirt cheap then, and it was dirt cheap in Northern Virginia, which was very expensive. And, and, um, I needed a place. I think he had the price that low because he knew he wanted someone young who needed the place. 
and he was such a creep from the moment I talked to him on the phone and met him. Like, weird vibes at first. Like, okay, he wasn't sexually harassing me within, like, uh, five minutes of our phone call, and then I arranged to go visit the place. But uh, I moved in pretty quickly with him. Man. And I won't get into all the stories. Maybe another video, and I've talked about it in other videos. Maybe if you look on my channel, you can find them. But he was um, the most homophobic person I ever met. He was a complete creep. Like, that's all he could talk about. Like, starting out basically was how bad women are and how gross he thought it was that women wanted to have sex with him after his wife died. And how, um, and, and things that are gay. Like, meaning, like, animals, insects, um he was seemingly obsessed with it and uh over the course of the month he would use subterfuge and creepy little tactics to hit on me he would ask me at lunch and dinner every day i got so fed up telling him no i just i almost like yelled at him in a way i just said like look i am tired i cannot do this and he's he's ah okay angelo um i will say his well his name is uh was uh william wagner uh, spelled with a W, he mentioned something about the Wagner composer, like, I forget if he was joking or not, or what if he said he thought he was related to him, or he just said he liked to tell that jack joke, I can't remember, Baptist pastor, once every, like, maybe three to five years, so it's only, it's been nine years, so not that often, like, I would look up his name and see, like, has he died yet, like, he was 89 years old, this horny old bastard, but he still had this crazy energy to hit on me. So basically, short of it is, the things he actually did that were so creepy, other than hit on me every day and give me so much unwanted attention, like I'd walk past his office to the kitchen to get breakfast, and then he'd walk in the kitchen and be like, good morning, Angelo, can I show you my spices today? I'm like, no. He's like, it'll only take a minute. I wanted to be like, fuck you, motherfucker. Like, you're telling me I have to look at your stuff? I just want to eat. Shut the fuck up. But... He was my landlord. I lived with him. And he didn't make me pay up front my rent. And he didn't even ask for a security deposit. So he really wanted some young, desperate guy to live with him. There were two other guys there who lived with him. I don't think he was going after them. Because he also told me, you're not like those other guys. <laughs> like, you're nicer or you're easier to talk to or some bullshit. We went to the, the unique thrift store in... in uh, god-awful dump of virginia what was it what's it called something it's two words i can't remember it's it's around mclean but it's not quite there not tyson's corner merrifield okay that's one word but it's like it sounds like two words uh yeah horrible place just you're stuck on huge city strodes or you know highway city highways whatever Went to a thrift store. He bought me a laundry basket there. I just took it with me to Annandale after that. Um, but he uh, was annoying the hell out of me. And uh, one day he, he asked me again. I was going to the bathroom to shower. And he said, can I take you to lunch? I was like, no. And he said, can I take you to dinner? I'll do it in his voice. Can I take you to dinner? I said, no. And he said, can I get in the shower with you? I said, no. He's like, I'm just kidding. I just looked at him like, what the fuck? Like, that's not a joke. And he just kept smiling. And um, what really pushed me over the edge of getting the hell out of there in a few days was, uh, this was December um, 2013. And he wanted me to help him. I should have refused after that shower comment. Like, fuck you, man. He uh, asked me to help him put up his nativity scene. <laughs> He called it a Koresh. I think I've, maybe I heard that before. Koresh is just like, I guess another word for a nativity scene of, you know, Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, the three wise men. And these figurines for the nativity scene, he wanted to put it out on his front balcony on the second floor of his home. They were like three or four feet high. They were really big and hollow inside. So you could put like lamps or lights inside. So they glow from the inside. And he had a, I think it was a staircase, I think in his basement. That, but here's the thing he wanted me to do. He he was, uh, I guess, too old to do it. And I don't care what excuse. I should have refused. 
but he wanted me to help him uh, pull out the figurines and set them up on his um, balcony. And the balcony, again, was on the second floor past it. You had to walk through his office to go there. So I'm doing that, and I realize, like, I'm, I'm crawling under this thing. My butt's sticking out, like, up, and he's just standing there staring at my body, like, I, and I did like say the words in my head. I'm like, is that weird? Like he's just looking at me. Like he's just looking at my body. I was in such denial. Still am in a way. And uh, eventually he went away. And I was going through his office. I had to make several trips through his office to go to the balcony. And one or two times, like I must have noticed, and before I get ahead of myself there were two pieces of paper on his desk one was blank and the other underneath it had some like drawings just peeking out from it and I I must have went by once or twice before I looked at it. I don't remember exactly but finally I'm like that's weird like it's awfully prominent and so I, I looked at it I pulled up the blank piece of paper and I'm laughing but it this was so this guy was a complete living a lie of a life uh was uh, uh living a secret life double life a lonely miserable life which was sad to watch but anyways it was a drawing of two guys having sex and the letter my eyes couldn't even focus it was like quick shots of a movie of like people like discovering the the scene of a massacre or something it's like you don't want to linger on it too long because it's like too profane it's just like 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 i just see words like balls grab lick whatever you know ass and it, like i can't even read a, more than like three words at once i'm like wait what is this and i was in such denial i was like well i know he wrote to prisoners he would tell me about that i'm like maybe this is a letter from a pr prisoner confessing their you know desires because he's trying to counsel them against it. Now, as I say that, I want to say, I even think that would be completely wrong in that, like, I don't think, like, that that would be homophobic in itself. But I, I was like, that's a, a kind of a better alternative than him just sexually harassing me. Like, at least it's not dealing with me. It's dealing with some other poor bastard. But that, that would be wrong, too. Like, again, like, I'm, I'm like, the homophobia is wrong. Uh, I mean, would be wrong, but, and he was the hom most homophobic person I ever knew. He said he, his son was gay. So he put his son in the hospital to make him straight in like the 1950s, but that he took him out after like three days because he realized being gay was genetic. I didn't like the whiplash of that. And that was like the second day I met him. So anyways, all this creepy stuff and think about it. He's saying being gay is genetic. Like how did you change your mind that quickly? Don't, aren't you the person? Like, I'm not, like, I, it's not like I have trouble believing whatever. Like, it's fine. You know, I don't care. Who cares? It's like, well, why is someone straight? Why are they tall, short? Who cares? You know, they are what they are. But um, there was that. It's like, how did you reverse your position so quickly when you seemed like the most rabid? I've never met someone who admitted to that before, to putting their son in the hospital to try and make him straight. That's torture. And also, it's like, you must fucking hate your son and yourself. Like, how do you do that to your kid? But also, the fact that he said it was genetic, it, it didn't occur to me until much later. I'm like, oh, he he was maybe admitting to me, but also saying like he, he thought the genes came from him. But anyways, that letter was out, and I put the paper back. I don't know if he ever realized if I looked at it or not. I was so fucking mad, too, because uh, he put me in such a horrible position of, like, he was trying to put the picture in my head of, like, here, Angelo, these are the only acceptable boundaries you can speak to me with, and it's sexual, and it will be under my terms. You will not speak openly about it, whatever. He made it to 89 at, by that point without being detected by his church or congregation or anyone as a sexual abuser and a liar and living a double life, let alone whatever fallout from, you know, secretly gay. But like, that was a different thing. Cause it's like, you can be gay and just, you know, have consensual loving relationships with people. This had nothing to do with that. And that's what was just like the guy who sexually harassed me last year. It was just hell, absolute hell on earth. 
and I'm still just devastated by it. Like as I've started going to therapy, it just ripped me open. It's just devastating, but I'm trying to, you know, have post-traumatic growth in, in light of all that, in the face of all that. But, um, he, it was such a dirty trick because it's like, he's doing that. And at the same time, if I were to ever confront him with that, he's setting it up the boundaries perfectly to let me know, Hey, I really don't appreciate the, you ever telling me about this. I don't ever want you to tell me about it or accuse me of it. You'll be the one who's violating my boundaries. I could tell he would be enraged by it. Um, same with this other guy too, uh, who is doing that living a secret double life. Um, so William Wagner had a wife, had a son. And like I said, I was, I would look him up once in a while. I'm thinking like, this guy must be dead by now. Right? Well, sure enough, I looked him up. I think yesterday I finally saw his obituary. That old son of a bitch lived in 97. How did he get the energy? And, uh, he died of COVID. So, um, I can't believe I'm like, wow. And all the mem remembrances of him, William Wagner, William F. Wagner of Falls Church, Virginia, sickened me to see his face. I'm like that creep, liar, slithering, reptilian scumbag. He, uh, somehow managed to evade detection all these years. And it's like, I kind of wish I said something before, but it's like, who would care? I'm not a part of his community, community, the whole church community. Uh, I don't particularly like that community in general. Like to me, it gets, it just once in a while, I get curious about what Christians think and I read their blogs and shit or watch their videos. I'm like, first of all, you're, you all are nothing special. This is, these are all made up myths. They don't make you any better than anyone. They don't make you righteous, anything. Second of all, I realize it's really disturbing the stuff they write about like just how divorced from anything good or decent what they believe is it just has to do with power power over others power over themselves dominating others like weird schismatic differences and and um the rigidity and conformity and uh just disturbing like uh like basically anti-human like you don't like anything good don't like anything fun and that's a oversimplification they like lots of fun but um so i, I don't like saying it like that but like basically just anti-decency it's like you have these sick compulsions you visit upon others because of your own fascistic machinations in your head about here's what's good here's what's bad and now i look at you know the priestly vestments and robes and stuff and all that i'm like these are just clothes you're regular people. You put your pants on one leg at a time. Like, who the hell are you? Think you're special. You have some inside knowledge. A bunch of weirdos. And, uh, yeah, he was a disgusting creep. William Wagner. But anyways, thinking about that, I am so goddamn tired right now. I need to sleep more. It's racked my body, my ability to recover from my workouts, to think clearly, to function normally. It's really wrecked me. Um, more so what this guy did last year to me. I'm just doing my best to get through it, to try and be as well as I can, sort of keep my posture good, my my diet slipping, I gotta work on my meal plan more, exercise right, not overtrain, and not um not uh and don't fail to rest enough. I gotta rest and don't go splurging, spending money out to make myself feel better. Although I will say this incense is awesome. Got this. Oh man, that's good. Um. But yeah, it just it's just devastating. That's all I can describe it. It's absolutely devastating. And the grief doesn't go away. But I need to be able to process it in my body. I'm seeing a therapist. I think that'll help. But it's hard. It's painful. Some nights I can't sleep. Um, you know, my message out there, stop fucking sexually harassing people, you creeps and weirdos. But, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm like, man... That guy seemed totally enchanted by me. Both William Wagner and this guy last year. Guy last year, again, living a double life too. And I could just tell, like, with at least William Wagner, like, well, with both of them, like, the fact that I went through such hell 
couldn't be less of a concern for them because they were never concerned with my consent or respecting me. It was all about acting out this power over me and their sick double life and this part of themselves that they must hate. And it, think about it. By putting the picture in front of me, in front of Angelo, like, oh, you're going to be the one who introduces anything sexual to me, Angelo. I'm not going to say it. You will. I'll just put the thought in front of you and guide you to it and make it unacceptable for you to say no. It's like this weird lie to themselves. They're saying it is a lie to themselves. They're saying that they're not doing anything sexual. They're not, at the very least, I get separate from the sexual harassment. They're not gay. Um, so it's like saying, oh, I'm not gay if it's just Angelo's bringing this to me. And if, if we're doing this theatrical, like acting out where I'm not going to say the sexual thing, but I'll push him to, uh, which I never will, uh, assholes. And, um... And if he brings it up against me, like accuse me of anything, oh, that would be infuriating. Because how different could that be from what, like, is what he's saying from what I'm doing? Look, I'm just being innocent. Oh, I was just joking. I was just kidding about getting in the shower with you. I just wanted to have dinner and lunch. What? And, you know, I'm sure he could come up with other excuses. Like, I've heard, I've read stories about pastors who do this and priests and stuff. The most sick, bizarre shit, like... By kissing someone against their will, they're delivering the Holy Spirit to them. And so, like, I, I, I can't even say those words. It's so f freaking disturbing. Like, how can you say that bizarre crap? Um, weirdos. Uh, so anyways, there you go. That's what religion's good for, ultimately. <laughs> Is giving a bunch of weirdos cover for their weirdo fetishes and compulsions. But, uh... You know, I don't want to fixate on that too much. I'm just trying to be well, to do well. Got my little statue up there, my art I like to focus on to sort of ground me. I don't want to spend too much money on art, though. The statue was free. Got it from the Thien Hao Temple. That was awesome. And um, writing, even when, you know, it's a struggle sometimes. I'm just in pain. Like, it just hurts my body. It wrecks me. My stress is up. My cortisol's up. My hormones are all out of balance because of it but realizing okay i'll be okay and not getting impatient with myself for not being well just being like okay this is what i gotta do i'm literally about to pass out now i'm so freaking tired so i'm gonna go but i had to talk like i don't know if i had to talk about this but I, it was time like i felt like i should i wanted to um just so creepy you know and i was in such denial with both guys too for a long time did that, well, like, what was that? Did that really happen? Like, yeah, it was sexual harassment, but was it really sexual harassment? I don't know. Like, and finally I had to admit to myself it was, and that these guys are playing a game to be very, very secretive and sneaky about it. And, um, you know, a good b baseline to judge people's behavior on is how does it make you feel? And that, you know, you gotta be careful. You can have honest misunderstandings about stuff. You know, thinking someone's trying to, like, bother me. And I realize, oh, they just didn't know they were doing something, whatever. But, I mean, in regards to, like, interpersonal behavior where, again, it can be tricky. And more so, I'd say, with people you know and respect and, or whatever. But you don't know what someone's going through. So, can, But anyways, just a good baseline in general to just at least interrogate further to see what's going on is figure out how does this make you feel. And the bottom line is... These two people made me feel like absolute shit all the time. And um, I still feel that way regarding thinking of them. It's not funny what they did. It's, you know, uh, it, it's gross. It's um, abusive. And um, it's sick. And anyways, uh, I just wanted to say something about it. But, you know, I'm going to keep pushing. Get some rest now. At some point I'll get a haircut. Well, trying to save some money there. And trying to experience good things in my life and keep signaling to my body that I'm safe, that I'm okay. Because otherwise I can get really tense and tense, you know, like, like, like frozen in like a frozen state where like I'm afraid to even do anything, go outside. And I don't want to be like that. So I'll go out, ride my bike, walk around. I rode my bike too hard today. It wore me out. But okay, that's another lesson too. Don't overtrain, especially as you get older. You got to know your limits and my calorie intake's low. And then I overeat but I can't eat enough to recover because my hormones aren't right and I'm overtraining so anyways but that's important to keep in perspective and be patient with myself so 
I'm just going to keep trying to do uh, things that make me well. And um, that's why I wanted to upload this video. So thanks for watching, everyone.